Hello everyone, this is PHTV Channel 4 in Palos Heights. I'm Sue Jankowski. Welcome to Meet with Moraine. I hope you're familiar with our program now because every month we meet with someone from Moraine Valley Community College and they tell us about the programs that are going on. Now Moraine Valley Community College is very close by so all of our neighboring uh, suburbs can go there. It's right there in Palos Hills and uh, I think you hopefully are familiar with it now. I think the thing we want to know about Moraine Valley Community College is that there's really something for everyone uh, over there and I hope this program proves that to you. And today uh, we have a guest, a uh, new guest, and that is Diane Medina. Diane, thanks for coming in today. Thank you for having us. It's so nice because Diane is going to tell us about a, really a rather new program, at least uh, I think it's fairly new. Um, she is the program coordinator for the Cannabis Retail Specialist Certificate Program. That's a really big title. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, I'm not sure that we as, you know, citizens are aware that, you know, some of these programs are avail available to us. This is very specific. And this is um, something that is really new. Um, I think, uh, according to what I'm reading here, this began in 2020. Yes. So this is still a fairly new program. So when did the college decide that they should add this kind of certificate program? Yes, yeah, so it is fairly new. We did start in August of 2020. Um, but the college saw an opportunity uh, right before um, recreational cannabis became legal in the state. Um, and so what happened was a former retired professor took the idea to our vice president of institutional advancement and had a conversation with our uh, president um, and then so then that uh, conversation continued and um, it was moved on into this this bigger um, certificate opportunity um, by the support of our board of trustees um, as well but um, yeah, so like I said yeah it, it was it was more so because um, the jobs are, are being created um, now that it's legal in the states and so um, it's a great opportunity for individuals and our current students to to look into this as is as an opportunity okay so uh, you know I've seen initially you know the lines of people trying to get a license for you know yes. being operating this so I mean this seems like it is a very uh, popular and very um, probably an extremely lucrative uh, business. So what what kind of experts do you have and what kinds of things are they, you know, why are people getting this certificate? What does this prove? What will you be able to do when you have this? So um, for experts, um, we did partner up with Cresco Labs, which is one of the bigger um, multi-state operating um, companies um, here in the States um, that uh, both has dispensaries and cultivation. Um, and so we um, started originally with them as partners to create the curriculum. Um, and so our um, executive um, director of corporate community and continuing education did a lot of the legwork to create and develop this um, certificate to see uh, where the jobs would be. And dispensaries is uh, one of the places that jobs are growing the fastest in the state. Um, and so license, getting a state in the license mm -hmm. and, and here in the state is, is a little bit tricky and it's a little bit complicated. Um, however, there are already many operating dispensaries that are looking for individuals on the entry level side. So this certificate can support those individuals um, to be knowledgeable of cannabis and um, the laws. And so this, that's what this certificate is, um, was created for. Okay, so in this certificate, you mentioned dispensaries and cultivation. Are, are the people getting this certificate going to be in the dispensaries uh, suggesting things to people to use, or are they out there somewhere, you know, growing products? No, well, with this certificate, you're going to get the basic understanding of um, how to work for a dispensary. Um, so you'll learn the history, you'll learn the laws, and then you'll learn about um, the chemistry of the plant. So when speaking to customers or patients at a dispensary, you're knowledgeable of um, what they're selling at that dispensary. Cultivation, 
Um, uh, I mentioned cultivation because Cresco Labs is um, also a cultivator. So other individuals who, who have maybe agriculture backgrounds, they would be more likely to go into the cultivation side. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So um, if you mentioned patients, so you know, some people are just there because they want recreational. Right. Some people are there as patients, but are the people getting this certificate, are they filling a prescription or are they suggesting if someone has a particular want or need as far as being a medical issue, do they have a certificate for that? There is certificates created, um, but at Maureen Valley, we only specialize in retail. Okay. So, um, so uh, jobs that would f uh, be used with this certificate would be in the retail side, a bud tender, um, more like a um, operation um, associate, uh, retail specialist. So more on the sales and operation side. Okay. Um, the medical side, if the dispensary carries um, medical, um, they would have to hire somebody with more of a patient care tech um, background. Okay, which the school does not provide at this time. No, at this time, no, it's just retail. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, Okay. so you decide you wanna learn about this. What kinds of, of classes are you taking to, yes, so to do this? Our certificate <laughs> is six courses, and it consists of three, uh, two business courses and a um, computer Microsoft Office course. We included the three cannabis courses, so an introduction to cannabis, um, cannabis laws and regulations, and pharmacology um, cannabis. And so with all those three courses, you earn the 13 credit hour certificate. Okay, and once you have the certificate, um, are they looking for that in dispensaries? Are they saying what kind of qualifications do you have? I would think they would want some sort of you know, verification of your knowledge. Yeah, so I've spoken to um, various professionals across um, um, the industry now, and um, one in particular has said that um, one of that our certificate is, um, is is very impressive because if a student's willing to go and and get this background knowledge and and foundation and then apply to the dispensary, they really would like for them to you know be hired and would consider them because they've already gone through this, so they're more um, marketable and more you know ready for those positions. Okay, that that makes a lot of sense because mm -hmm. they, then they would have a basis a business basis is, is kind of what you're offering at the college. Right. So that gives them a, a little leg up there. Right. Um, so um, now the faculty is probably, am I right by guessing that that faculty was already there? Correct. And so then they came in from different um, disciplines. What, who are we looking at for So that? we have our, um, our chemistry and physical science faculty um, teaching the introduction courses and the pharmacology course. And then we have our criminal justice uh, faculty. Um, he's teaching the law and regulation sites. And so our pharmacology instructor has a background in uh, forensic drug chemistry and our criminal justice faculty, his background is, um, he was a prosecutor, prosecutor for the Cook County States um, and then a supervisor for the Narcotic Bureau. So they both, you know, they both have really good, um, extensive background um, to be positioned to teach and lead these courses. Okay, uh, well that's good because you would need to have, it's nice you have someone that was available most likely right within that school setting that yes. could, you could bring in for that. Yes, and so then during um, last year, um, during the pandemic, you know, it was kind of hard to bring in um, um, additional um, adjuncts right. or support. So these instructors did really great um, to lead on these courses. Oh yeah, that yeah. was, I mean, that's a hard time to start kicking off things in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. yeah, well, so about how many students are involved in this and how many of you had like from the start, you know, did they complete their course and then go on to do what they thought or, with some of them, I would think they would think that maybe that's a jumping off point to something else. Right, mm -hmm. so we actually enrolled since the fall of 2020, 195 students. Um, some did not complete the whole entire certificate, but they at least took the introduction course. And so 60% actually have um, claimed 
um, the certificate as their major. And so we're currently tracking those students, see where they're at. Over the summer, I did um, informal survey to hear back from them. Mm -hmm. And some are, um, we have at least three in different um, positions, um, one in a dispensary and then um, another one in an, um, so an infusion company that create that that makes edibles for for um, for another company, so like a third party type, um, and so we're just collecting their their uh, feedback and I'm tracking them and see where they're at. Uh, but right now um, we do have um, 20 students that completed the certificate. Okay, well that seems like really great that they went through the whole program. Mm -hmm. Have those students then gone on to? Um, jobs that are, you know, something they were looking for uh, at that point? Do you know if um, what their success is or so far? We don't exactly know um, all of the students' um, positions, but some are still at the college uh, completing an associate in business or they're in um, information technology. So the certificate is sort of a add-on to what they're already considering and maybe cannabis could be uh, um, a minor per se. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So they can use those courses, mm -hmm. uh, they can get a certificate, but they can keep on going using those hours that they're getting in that certification to get their whole um, associate's uh, degree at yeah. the end. Or vice yeah. versa, if yeah. their associate degree requires business and um, Microsoft Office, then they could add those courses to the certificate. If they've already been at the college taking so many credits towards their associate, then they are, were able to apply those credits to the certificate. Okay. Now, who who is kind of interested in this? Is this a lot of young people, are retired people? Like, yes, I finally you know found my niche. I'm going to get get out there and and you know get certified in this. Who who's your who's your audience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it it's um it's actually a variety. I did uh, an average age group, and they're in their early 30s. Um, and then I've spoken to, to returning students that they, you know, been in s different industries and so that now they're um, interested in this because they've been interested in personally. Um, but then we have our young students who are taking those um, courses for their associate degrees and saw the chance to take the certificate. Who is it drawing in? Like, is it a, is someone interested in like a particular avenue, like who, who is your student? Is it like someone who wants to start their own business? Yes, yeah. we have a lot of entrepreneur uh, students. Their mindset uh, is entrepreneurship and owning their own business. Um, but um, then we also have students with different backgrounds um, and or experience uh, from other industries that can see themselves in, uh, um, in the industry. So sales, marketing, finance, accounting, security, logistics, uh, transportation, anyone in those areas can find themselves into the industry. Oh, that is a wide spectrum of mm -hmm. uh, job opportunity choices. Um, that's really great. So um, that they can do. So the job outlook, right now it seems like the job outlook for anybody, <laughs> for anything is pretty great. Uh, but I'm not sure about, if yeah. they were going into the retail business selling cannabis, if that's as great, just because of its vast new popularity. I mean, because it's brand new out of the box, I think people are super interested in in, in getting into that. Is mm -hmm. that true? So just with um, last year, 2020, there was a, a little bit over 8,000 um, jobs created within um, different, um, cannabis companies, not just dispensaries, but um, ancillary businesses. Um, so consulting firms, um, 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 law firms shifting things to help people position themselves to obtain um, license. So just a little bit over $8,000, uh, eight, I'm sorry, 8,000 jobs uh, were, were created. Jobs, yeah. yeah, and so right now there is no um, um, actual st st statistic da data for um, for to support this mm -hmm. because of the um, complications between the Illinois law and the federal law. So there's that's not available at the moment. But there is a lot of um, art. There are many 
um, resources um, that do provide that support. So what we used um, in some of our documents to, to give you a, a glimpse mm -hmm. um, was the Chicago Sun-Times and it reported that um, the number of plant touching jobs, which means butt tenders and cultivation and infusion would be up to 63,000 by 2025. Um, 63,000 wow. jobs. Okay. Is that countrywide or just State. statewide? Well, that's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're ex seeing that this is going to keep expanding yes. at this point. Um, does the licensing for owning a, a site, I mean, there's limitations to how many they're allowing. Correct. So are they assuming that there will be more of that as time goes on? I, I believe so. Um, there is... Um, different states doing different things. And what I think is that uh, we are um, doing it at a moderate pace, mm -hmm. um, but then there are, um, there will be multiple lotteries, um, you know, um, consideration of multiple lotteries. So then there's other, others to have the opportunity to, to go through that process. Okay, so that's the lottery system is the, you know, trying to make it uh, fair and equal for people to Correct. randomly be selected. Uh, for you know, o opening a store it must be a very, a very lucrative if you're the store owner. Um, so are people like thinking, okay, I'll get certified to do this, but then my next step is, mm -hmm. I want to own somewhere because I, I can do well. Yes, I think that that's um, individuals' mindset right now um, to to gain as much knowledge, not just from our certificate, um, but what we teach our students is network, network with these sp specific organizations that have been um, in the forefront of legalizing it and um, normalizing the industry. Mm -hmm. um, and then organizations that so, uh, give you those resources, how to position yourself. So I think individuals are taking um, those steps. Um, there has been uh, plenty of um, talk within different social platforms, LinkedIn, um, and then um, webinars, um, conferences, They're j the information is out there. Okay. Um, do you see this then, your, uh, the, the school, that whole program growing more and being like more extensive or this is about as far as you're going to go as far as you know i know i know it's hard to predict the future mm -hmm. but that retail specialist certificate that that's kind of what we're working on there is nothing beyond that that is needed at this point um i think that that um there is an opportunity um definitely an opportunity to look at other areas within um um education to um, support our community and our students who are interested in, um, let's say, infusion, mm -hmm. um, and learn about what it takes to create products from the start. Um, so if there's something that the college, you know, uh, would be interested in on, you know, it will take some research and, and looking mm -hmm. into it, but there's transportation, there's the medical side of things, um, uh, security, um, so there is other um, other avenues that, other, that you yeah, can uh, yeah. go to. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of really probably a little bit of a jump, uh, jumping off uh, point. Mm -hmm. And you've been at it for over a year now already. Yes. Yeah. 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 So this has been um, my prod my baby over the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of a good and bad time to start. You know, on one hand, yeah. things are limited. On the other hand. With some of those limitations, you can really delve into uh, things without it, you know, kind of starting up all of a sudden. Yeah. 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 Um, is there anything else, uh, Diana, that you would like our viewers to know about this program? Yes. So we are offering uh, courses in the spring. Our next one is um, mid uh, December, December twentieth, okay. online. But then we're also oh, offering right. okay. um, in person section um, over at our um, Tinley location. Um, and so that that it will be, um, I believe, from 10 to 11:40 on um, Mondays or Wednesdays. I, I gotta confirm. I'll confirm sure. that with you. Yeah. So that's a great opportunity for individuals who are interested in just the basic knowledge of what cannabis is, uh, has been, and how it's um, going on in our state. That just gives you a little bit of introduction, and then you can jump in to decide yes. if you want to continue and get that retail uh, certificate. Right. So in order yeah. to continue to the next two courses of 
of the certificate. So we have um, a sequence. They take a Introduction to Business, Cannabis Intro, and the um, Microsoft Office first. And then they can move on to the laws and the pharmacology with the principles of retailing. That's the sequence. Okay. We also offer a uh, $1,000 scholarship um, to students um, completing the entire certificate. So if you register as someone who will take the entire certificate, you can also apply to a $1,000 um, scholarship. And then you would get that $1,000 upon completion of the certificate. Um, no, you would get that in, in to to um, provide your tuition. Uh, I see. Right. Okay. Well, gosh, uh, then if somebody really wanted to do this, there would be no barriers re yeah. really to, I mean, I'm not sure how much the certificate would cost without the $1,000, but that surely is a big help for sure. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, and, it's, and it's a great opportunity uh, for our students um, that was, you know, uh, available to them really early on. And it will continue for um, as long as uh, the funding is available for the scholarship. Okay, yeah. so to do that, um, how would they either start up like December 20th online or go to the Tinley Park? Do they just go on the Moraine Valley website? Yes, and then you can um, search cannabis and then we have a whole page and you could um, fill out your information, inquiry. I get the information, but then I also work with our admissions department. Mm -hmm. And so then they'll start you off with the whole um, steps to um, register and be admitted as a student. Okay, and then for the $1,000 scholarship kind of thing, can that be done online or do you bring yeah. that up? That you can do that, that online too. You could also okay. do that online too. On the same page, you'll get information about the scholarship. Okay, mm -hmm. now say for example, they didn't want to do it online, they really want to go in, meet people, kind of get a feel for things, and they're not that familiar with Morning Valley. Uh, should they just make a, like an appointment to come in and talk to somebody? How would they do that? Yeah, so they can go to uh, our website and make an appointment um, through our admissions um, page. Um, and then they'll speak with our admissions representative and um, the appointment would be in our main campus at the S building. But if they're over um, near the Tinley um, campus, mm -hmm. off campus, then that, that is also a, a walk-in opportunity um, and get information for, about this program. Okay, I mean, there's no time like the present to get started with something. Even if you didn't start your classes, in December, I'm sure there's another, uh, you know, semester, you know, yes. coming up, another quarter, whatever, however you guys measure, and they could kind of get positioned to do it then. Yeah, and I'm always available. I um, talk to students who are interested all the time, and those inquiries come to me. So, um, yeah, I'll share my information. It's, it's, I'm available anytime. You'll walk them through it if they are unfamiliar with the the process. You can get them through it. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much, Diane, for coming in. Uh, that is a nice opportunity for uh, some people who are looking to do something that would be different outside of what they, you know, maybe are doing right now, or maybe they just need a, a new path, or maybe they're just getting started as a young person. Is there an age uh, limit or there is start? Not, <laughs> there is not, but in order to work in a dispensary, you have to be 21. That's what I thought. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they can come in as an 18-year-old or 19-year-old, but they're not going to get a job doing Correct. that. Correct. But they could get a job doing something else. You, you know, you mentioned so many other categories that this Right, could right. So if you're a part of that ancillary seeking opportunity and, you know, you have some accounting and or internships, you'll be, you'll be able to do that. But in order to work in a dispenser, you have to be 21. Okay. Good to know. All right. Thanks again, Diane, for coming Thank in Thank you for today. having us. Always a pleasure. Uh, I hope you learned something today, and we will see you next month on Meet with Maureen. Thanks for watching us. Have a great day. Bye-bye.